Hello, I'm Kim Workmeister. I'm the owner of Worker Bee Media, taking over my music channel, Kimberly Alana, to talk about video as it pertains to musicians. For transparency, this is the second time I've shot this video. It was a squeaky floor problem, then my husband needed to run the laundry, my son was stomping on the floor, it was just too much. Let's get to the first set of questions. List three to five options of cameras from cheapest to most expensive that you would recommend. There's a lot of cameras out there and I'm not super into the tech because that's a very long rabbit hole that you can go down and you can just get lost and then you'll come back and like $10,000 in debt or more. I don't go down that hole. I just stick with what I can afford. I'll just stick with what I like and also my dream list. The cheapest, your phone. Most of us have smartphones and these smartphones have some really powerful cameras, you guys. Assuming that I'm speaking to mostly musicians, for what most people are trying to accomplish on YouTube, your phone is more than sufficient for that. Unless you're seriously trying to be a filmmaker or make really elaborate videos. And technically it's not cheap because phones are getting kind of expensive nowadays. Second, I would say is an entry-level DSLR or mirrorless camera. So in Canon, that would be the Rebel line or in their mirrorless line, I believe it's M. Of course, there are other brands out there that are just as good. And Sony has a great, their cameras look so good. <laughs> expensive, I haven't really got to play around with many expensive cameras because I'm pretty minimal in my setup. But I can tell you that my dream camera is the Canon EOS R5 that's getting ready to come out. Their new top of the line mirrorless camera due to 8K. Before I knew about that, I wanted the Canon C200. For a while, I really wanted the Blackmagic Pocket. Once I do upgrade to one of those cameras, I'm gonna need to upgrade my computer to be able to edit that footage. So I'm not just looking at the purchase of a camera and one of those. I'm also looking at getting a whole new state computer just to handle the footage from this camera. So I probably won't be upgrading for a while. Next question. What is the advantage to buying a camera versus using a phone like an iPhone Pro Max? iPhones are great. For that matter, Samsung, they're great too. I mean, they're, they're doing some amazing things with smartphone cameras. And I'm not trying to downplay that at all. The main difference is control. You have more control if you have a dedicated camera. So things like depth of field, meaning Having that blurry background, it's overrated, but I understand why we all want it. Frames per second, even though you can change how many frames per second you want with smartphones, you have more control if you have a dedicated camera. The actual glass through which the camera looks through, the actual lens. For example, if I take my dad's reading glasses, it looks one way. If I take my mom's reading glasses, even though they're supposed to be the same thing, it looks different. I know you can get attachments for iPhones, but it's not the same. Oh, the sensor size. The smaller the sensor, the more light you're gonna need. I haven't been able to play with some of the newest top of line cameras and their video capabilities, but I know in the past, you still needed to go buy some studio lights, indoor pictures, and indoor video left a lot to be desired. What camera do you use? and what are the pros and cons with it. I still have entry level equipment. I have a Canon Rebel T6i. I decided the look that I was going for and that's just what I decided on. The pros are it is so lightweight. In comparison to the other DSLRs that were available at the time from Canon, the Rebel is so light. So when I do go out and I shoot some video and I have to hold it or put it on a tripod and carry it around. The cons are it's a crop sensor camera. Usually that doesn't really matter, but when I buy a lens, it zooms it in so much. Like I'm finding I'm having to scoot my camera like way far back, or I want to take a picture of the baby, but I have to like stand on top of a whole bunch of stuff just to get that baby in shot. It's so close because it's a crop sensor. It doesn't shoot in 4K. When I bought it, 4K was still kind of a new thing. For example, I finally did get around. Those are the main disadvantages. So now I'm going to move on to some audio questions because that seems to be a really big question for people right now in this pandemic and having to stream. So stay tuned for that.